Good morning, everybody. This is Anna Marie. I am the Liasa Manager, and it is my pleasure today to welcome you to the session hosted by the Liasa Marketing and Advocacy Interest Group. It has really been a long time since we all were able to get together in person and have a heartwarming, and it is heartwarming to see so many of our members and even a few non members during our virtual events. We do appreciate your support. Uh, either during the live event or when you watch and like the recordings that we upload to the Liasa YouTube channel called the Liasa News. I'll pop the direct link in the chat um, to the Liasa News YouTube channel for you in a moment. If you have not yet subscribed to the Liasa News YouTube channel, head over there after the session, subscribe, ring the no notification bell, and you will get notified every time that we upload new content. So today, 8 September, is International Literacy Day. Previous years, round about this time, we, we would have prepared to head over to the South African Book Fair that is usually held during the week and after Literacy Day. Obviously, this year, they had to make new and exciting plans how to replace the face-to-face -face event. So you can join the Book Fair virtually from 11 to the 13th of September for a super exciting program. The program, the tickets and other information can be found on the website, the South African Book Fair website. I think I also pop that URL in the chat in a moment. So traditionally, libraries go hand in hand with reading and books. It is a trinity, a triangle, however you want to see it. And each of us will struggle with, each, of, each one of those will struggle without the other one. Um, so whether you're reading for pleasure or for educational purposes or just to stay informed, whether you read a paper-based book or a paper or a journal or magazine or anything in digital format, it is important that you read and let it be a habit that can grow within our communities. We need to lead by example. So in 2007, a study was done by the South African Book Development Council and it showed that only 14% of South Africans read and a staggering 58% of South Africans do not own a book uh, for leisure reading. And we are so grateful for our authors and our publishers that in spite of these shocking statistics, they continue to create and publish material for us to enjoy. NB Publishers, our sponsor for today, and our two authors, Elizabeth and Pam, on behalf of Liasa and the entire library and information community, we thank you and we salute you for doing that for our communities and our um, people in this country. Before I hand you over to Petra Marie from NB Publishers um, to introduce the two sponsors, to the two authors for today, just a quick overview of anybody that is not familiar with the Zoom functions. So please keep yourself muted to avoid being a distraction uh, to the speakers or the other participants. You'll find the mute or the, uh, the unmute button located towards uh, or to in the, in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Just click on that to mute or unmute yourself. Use the chat feature that is located in the bottom center of your screen. Click on it to open it and you can type your questions or your comments and then just press enter and it will go through. So with that being said from me on behalf of Liasa, Welcome to each and every one of you and enjoy the session. Pietra, over to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's so nice to see you all. <laughs> we feel pretty isolated in this, um, you know, under the COVID regulations. So it's very nice, if, albeit then on a Zoom meeting to see everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce our two authors. I just wanted to know, do you want me to uh, introduce them at the same time or shall we go with Pamela first and have a discussion first? What would you like me to do? Okay. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe do one at a time. Yes, so who, who, I'm going to start with Pamela then. I'm going to switch my camera off now because I'm going to read you a bio. Pamela Newham was born in Johannesburg where she lived for most of her life. 
She and her husband moved to Cape Town in 2009. She has a son, daughter, and five grandchildren. She began her working life as a librarian in the newspaper library at the Star. When her children were small, she studied for a BA at UNISA, followed by a diploma in higher education from the University of the Witwatersrand. She taught English for five years before entering the world of magazines as a feature writer and eventually as features editor of Femina. After taking a year off to complete an honors degree in English at WITS, she worked as the education editor and agony aunt on Pace magazine. When she moved to Cape Town, she freelanced for a time on Your Family. After 25 years of magazine writing, she turned her attention to fiction writing. Poetry is her first love, and her poetry collections are Washing Day in the Bush, 2017, and Double Jointed Girls, 2019. She has also written four books for preteens and young teenagers. Her first book, Three Blind Dates, was runner-up in the 2010 Maskew Miller Longman Award for Children's Literature in 2010. This was followed by a sequel, A Dog's Best Friend, in 2013. Also in 2013, The Clipspringers, published by Oxford University Press, was chosen by the Department of Basic Education as a CAPS-approved reader for Grade 7. In 2020, The Boy and the Poacher's Moon was published by Himan and Rousseau. She has lectured on journalism and given workshops on writing for children, one of which was at the University of Cape Town Summer School. Pam lives in Hout Bay and loves reading, writing, and walking on the beach. She also spends as much time as possible in the Limpopo Bushveld and the Kruger National Park. Both the sea and the bush have inspired many of her poems. She enjoys exploring the ironies of life and believes that if we look for it, there's humor in just about everything. So with that being said then, Pam, we're looking forward to your discussion. Good afternoon, Pamela. My name is Teresa Skuman. Um, I'm the chairperson for MAKE and I will be doing um, the interview with you. It's a great privilege and honor to do this interview today and I'm sure everybody's looking forward to learn more about yourself and also, and also your work. Um, we definitely have a lot in common. Uh, I can tell you I'm also, I was also born in Johannesburg, in, um, actually in the Mary Mount. When I was very small, I used to tell the people that I was actually born in the merry-go-round. <laughs> but um, yes, and then we also moved to um, Cape Town 10 years ago. So we definitely have the same things in common. And I also love reading, also a librarian, but also changed now to a marketing and communication specialist over the years. Okay. So um, without further ado, I'm going to start with the questions now, Pamela. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Pamela, one of the things that excites librarians is to learn that an author is also part of a library family. Would you share with us in short where you worked as a librarian? Well, I worked in a very different type of library to the one most people um, are used to. Uh, because it was a newspaper library in a time long before um, internet and Google. So what was, well, how it worked, every single day, every newspaper article would be cut out of the library, uh, out of the newspaper, pasted onto a, another a separate sheet and then filed. Um, and the librarian's job was to know how to retrieve these different articles when the journalists needed to see them. We also had a vast um, collection of reference books and we helped with their research. Um, so basically that was my um, contribution to working in a library. Thank you. So in your bi bi biography, I also read that you were an English teacher and um, um, you, when you, that you were also introduced uh, 
that you were previously an English teacher and spent many years working in public relations as well. So our interest group made, like uh, um, Anna Marie explained, it's all about library advocacy and promotion. What tips can you give us to promote books and libraries in general? Well, I was thinking, um, I, you know, that to me, about being in a library, having a, 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 the librarians in the library, what they really need to do is to connect with the public. Um, and I don't think I can really offer much because when I think of the library that I am very familiar with, which is Half Bay, they seem to tick all the boxes um, from the workshops that they run um, and for, from the, the, the toddlers, story time. Um, you go into the library in the afternoons, you will see children doing their homework with help on the computers. Um, they have uh, linked up with a local organization called the Heart Bay Book Owls um, and given they had a mini uh, uh, book fair plan just before COVID and unfortunately it was cancelled. Um, and that was to bring local writers and the readers of Heart Bay together. So what I'm saying is I think those are the types of um, uh, ways that libraries can appeal to the public and can get people through the door. The bigger question is to get people reading, obviously, um, and so that's also a, a huge one. Thank you. So um, definitely, I think the connection and the uh, building of relationships, those two are very important um, for the promotion and marketing. And um, I agree with you, I've also recently visited uh, quite a few public libraries and they're really going out of their way. And um, the standards are really very high here. And uh, I, can, I can see that they, they're doing what they can to get the people to enjoy reading. Um, yeah, I agree. Definitely. You clearly have a passion and a profound skill for writing as well. Um, you are a magazine journalist who writes many articles for well-known magazines and you're also a poet. Could you tell us more about your poetry and maybe also um, tell us a little bit more uh, f uh, about the magazines that you write for? Um, well, my poetry started quite late in life. Um, I think as a teenager, as most teenagers do, I've written a few poems. Um, but uh, I went to a summer school workshop on poetry writing um, and that inspired me. We had to write a poem every day for five days, which sounds impossible, but I managed to do it. And um, from there, I uh, was lucky enough to join Fanula Dowling, well-known writer, her workshop. And I would say she's been my mentor. Um, and I uh, really find writing poetry, as I say, my first love. Uh, so that was how I started. The magazine um, industry was also a love of mine for many, many years, and it's heartbreaking to know that so many magazines have closed. Um, but I think that writing mag on a magazine was always a lot of fun. I met so many people. I had wonderful um, opportunities. Uh, so yes, so those were, that was a very good time, but I found that became very difficult, although I tried it, to be a fiction writer and to be a journalist. And I, I literally had to give up being a journalist so that I could concentrate on writing my books. Um, so that's what happened. Uh, I haven't written magazine articles for some time now. Thank you. I can just think how time consuming it must be to fulfill both um, uh, roles at the same time. So I think it was a good decision that you did slow down a bit and focus on the one. Um, that's, that's great. Okay, so but being a published poet and a young adult author of, uh, of um, young adults, you've also written three books um, and that, that should also be very demanding. 
please share with us what inspires you to be so creative and maybe just give us the titles of the three books that you've um, written. Um, well, it's really difficult to say what makes you creative. If I think about it, I think I was born to be a writer as a very small child. Um, I made up stories all the time. I think being an only child, perhaps it was a way of um, keeping myself busy and, and I have always had a, a deep love for writing and language. Um, so it was always in the back of my mind that I wanted to write a book. And I think I started over the years many, published a couple of short stories, but as I said, it was only until I decided to concentrate 100% on writing fiction that I um, was able to get published and um, that's where I am now. Um, but yes, creativity, an interesting thing, uh, but something really worthwhile to have, I think, if you've got a creative um, side. Uh, my three books that I wrote before, um, The Boy and the Poacher's Moon, were Three Blind Dates, uh, A Dog's Best Friend, and The Clip Springers. Wonderful. Um, it's, it's so amazing to, to listen to you and see that you had this dream as a young child already to, to write books and that you actually uh, you were chasing your dreams and you fulfilled that um, need and you reached your objective, which is absolutely wonderful. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Never give up. <laughs> Never give up. That's a very good uh, message for everybody out there. Um, so today's webinar theme focuses on nature conservation. Uh, your book, The Boy and the Poacher's Moon, that you just mentioned, is, is it's actually set in the Kruger National Park. Do you have a special place in your heart for the Kruger National Park? Do you go there or did you go there often to visit? Um, I'm sure you're quite familiar with the Kruger National Park yourself. Yes, um, I was lucky enough as a child to have um, an aunt and uncle who lived, had a farm quite near Kruger. And so I spent several holidays there. And then we used to go in just for the day. My uncle was an honorary game ranger. So having that as a young child um, instilled in me a deep love for the bush that I've had forever. Um, and uh, we've been lucky enough now, when we moved away from Joburg, and of course it was much easier to get to Kruger when you lived there. But we have, um, a, a share in a, a, a house in, in Limpopo province. So I am able to go there every year and spend some time. Uh, so that is that's my love of the bush. I get to spend time in the bush. I don't go to see the animals. I go to be where the animals live. Um, I love just being in a place where they might wander past at any time. Agree. The Kruger National Park is a, it's such a, a wonderful place where you can really find time for your soul and you can also be very creative um, just in, out, out there in nature. Um, yeah. My, my in-laws also stay there in Pumalanga, um, Leidenberg, so they often go to the National Kruger and uh, once in a while we also go with them and it's absolutely amazing. Uh. Um, tell us why you decided on the theme of poaching um, some time ago, I read a book by uh, Julian Rademeyer called Killing for Profit, which was a book about rhino poaching. I hadn't, I didn't know that much about it. Obviously, I read about it in the newspapers. But that book made a huge impression on me because um, I hadn't realized the extent of rhino poaching. I hadn't realized um, about this whole idea of a middleman who gets the, the, the um, horns out of the country and then of course goes, uh, goes overseas, all the amount of money that is involved. Um, and so when it came time to write, it seemed to me to be a good theme because it was something I felt the children are aware of. And I think children are, are interested in conservation. They want to know more. Um, and it also gave the opportunity to write a good adventure story. So, um, Yes, I got, that's where my love of rhino, your my interest in rhino approaching. 
Thank you. So without giving the whole story away, why does the um, protagonist in the story remain um, nameless for those who will be reading the book? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think I wanted to keep him a slightly shadowy character. Um, I think books that have been written about rhino poaching so far have tended to uh, make it good against evil. Whereas to me, um, there is possibly a very gray area. Um, a lot of people are drawn into this terrible thing through the poverty that they are living in. And it is not necessarily because they want to kill rhino, but the money involved is so huge that a lot of very ordinary people living in ordinary villages get involved. And so I thought I would make one of my characters that person, that boy. And I also think the other three, ch uh, four children are teenagers as well, they're much his age, to show that just where you are in life, the choices that you make and the choices you're forced to make. Um, and so, yes, I, I, he just was the boy. Um, and I must say, uh, I, I have a great deal of affection for that boy. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, I think it's absolutely an amazing book for teenage boys um, to read. Um, even for girls as well, uh, they, they should also be interested. Um, but that's the time that they want to explore and, they, and it's absolutely just focused. And I think they will really enjoy reading this book from any age, um, 13 plus. Um, is that the good age for, for, for the kids to read the book? Yes, um, I think some younger children have read it too. Um, I, it's again, again a, a reading age type of thing. Um, I hope it's, you know, it has quite a range of interest to different children at different ages. Thank you. So your book was launched just with the entering of the lockdown and the office usually visits schools and bookshops to promote their books. Please use this platform and tell us a little bit more. How, how can we get a copy? Can we order it online? Um, yes, thank you. It has been difficult to market a book at this time. Uh, the book is available at most bookstores. Um, and if it's not there, you can ask them to order it. And yes, it's, it's available online. Um, online? Uh, is it Amazon? Uh, do you know? Um... Yes. Uh, yeah. And different um, take a lot to those sort of places to seem to have it. Thank you so much. So um, can we just find out, or, or, are you working on any new books at the moment? Um, you know, I found it quite difficult to write my books at this time. I think it's not unusual. A lot of people have found it difficult. I've always got a project on the go, um, but I think I've, re I've written more poetry um, about COVID um, and what we've been going through, because that's the kind of poetry I write on observations of what's happening on a daily basis. So um, yes, there are ideas and I'm hoping that I can get back to it quite soon. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I'm sure you will be inspired again um, as we get through this lockdown. Totally understandable. And um, yes, sorry to hear that your book was just launched with the lockdown. That should have been very difficult. Um, but I'm glad that you're keeping it all on a positive note, continuing with the poetry. And um, with that, I would like to, uh, unfortunately, my, my time with you um, came to an end now. So I would want to ask you, if you don't mind, to read um, one of your favorite poems to us. Thank you. Okay, I shall. Um, this is a poem from my book, Washing Day in the Bush. And it's called Bird on a Bicycle. At the back of the garage, a mountain bike hangs high on a sturdy hook. And between its handlebars, she has built a nest. A thousand bushveld trees, and this is where she decides to lay three speckled eggs. 
Those who care argue a bunting, perhaps. No, a chat. I admire her diligence. Not even the Land Rover's growl can chase her away. Then someone says, she comes here everywhere, every year. And I realize she's not such a crazy bird after all. Not for her, the lashing storm, the sharp-toothed predator, the silent, menacing sliver. Nothing but our curious human eyes. Absolutely beautiful. You've got such talent. Um, it's, it's, it's a great poem. I, I enjoyed it. And I'm sure everybody else enjoyed it too. Thank you so much. Thank you um, for allowing me to interview you, Pamela. And um, everybody, you must go and buy the book, please. Um, I'm sure if you have got teenager children in the home, um, please um, encourage them to, to read this book. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to Yasa and to NB for this opportunity. Thank you very much. And to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Renee and Pam, and that was very insightful. Um, Pietra, will you introduce Elizabeth for us? Uh, thank you very much. I will do that with pleasure. Elizabeth Wasserman is a clinical microbiologist in private practice and also has an appointment as an extraordinary professor in medical microbiology at Stellenbosch University. She believes that learning should be fun and that science is the most powerful form of magic. She published her first book for children in 2009. Her books include Spear und Willem, uh, also translated as Dark Detective William. There are seven titles in the series. Janis and Crick, four titles in the series. Professor Sapatina's Wetenskap book. The Afutire van Anna Atum, that's also translated as The Adventures of Anna Atum. Then there's the Elf Darix, there's four titles in the series. And she currently lives in Cape Town with her family and dogs. Elizabeth, we would love to listen to you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I will be doing the interview. I am Renee Skumbi. I'm a very big fan of your books. I'm a children's librarian or information facilitator at Large School Rustenburg. And we are also proud NB school ambassadors. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank Inc. for giving us all this magic um, and being associated with NB publishers. It's a very, very big honor. Um, Elizabeth, I'm sure 2020 has been such a challenging time for you. You find yourself in a profession that is playing a significant role currently. Please share with the audience what your focus area is as a doctor. Mm. Yes, um, I'm sitting here in my little office in, my, in the lab. Um, I'm a pathologist specializing in um, uh, infectious diseases, clinical microbiology and epidemiology specifically. So yes, uh, the diagnostic side of infectious diseases. We've been very, very busy um, throughout the, the past months. Um, no one would have thought what was going to happen to us. Um, so yes, um, I haven't had a lockdown. I was some days feeling a bit jealous of people able to stay at home. Um, it's been fascinating uh, learning how little we know actually. Um, and uh, just watching the world, apart from, from my side uh, and the clinical work surrounding um, the, the epidemic and the physical illnesses that we had to deal with. Um, but yes, it's been a very interesting time. Um, it's with a sigh of relief that we are sort of emerging on the other side of this. It's been a test run. Next time we'll know better what to do. Thank you. That answers some time. of your questions. <laughs> yes, I realize now how privileged we are as um, 
to be to having you part of this webinar because I know you are busy. So thank you so much. And just bringing us into the picture, we realize it's such a privilege. Although you chose a career as a scientist, your success as an author is well known to all of us. Please share with us how your daughter's birth brought along you becoming an author. <laughs> Yes, you know, um, I, I, I'm not too confident about my status as an author. You know, um, uh, I don't always regard myself as a writer. I'm more a reader. I'm a great fan of books. Um, yes, and I've always wanted to write. It's always been my greatest ambition. I was in awe of, of, of anyone who, who could possibly write a book, you know, and libraries were my refuge. Um, I love a library. It was the best place ever. Um, but yes, I wanted to write. I, and, uh, I had this idea that I must first see the world and get something to write about, which I think was the right decision for me. Um, and uh, as things go, I got busy. And only when my daughter was born, I think I really started to to put these ambitions into actions. Um, and also because of my work, I had to travel a lot. Um, I was in academia or I was in the academic position for a long time, which meant conferences and overseas research work. Um, and I had to travel a lot when she was little. And um, the thing started where I sent stories home to her um, and started writing poems. And, drawing pictures. And it was on one of these um, research trips that I started writing the first real book for her, actually, to tell her about the places I've been visiting. So a lot of my books involve travel, as you know. So it's been a way to bringing the, the world back home um, and uh, coloring the atlas with stories. Elizabeth, I'm a um, huge champion or a fan for a wonder woman or a superwoman. And <laughs> I can see in the profession you are serving and you are an author and you are a mother and you can still bring all those things together. Um, so I must say, I think a lot of the guys here on the webinar today now will say that you are also one superwoman. So thank you for just being that for us. You write and publish quite often. How do you balance your career in writing, being this um, literature wonder woman that I think you are? <laughs> it's, it's not, I won't go for that title, but it's nice of you to say that. Um, you know, give a busy person something to do. Um, so I am quite busy, um, but I'm well organized. And uh, because, you, because writing is such fun, you have to make I, I, you always make time for something that's fun. Um, so I had to uh, work this into my day. I have to make time for this. Usually it's very early in the morning. I am an early riser or when I'm traveling on buses or trains or planes or sitting in a restaurant, I'm always scribbling down notes. Um, so yes, it's in one sense, it's, it's a discipline, um, but uh, mostly it's just, because it's such fun, you have to make time for it. Yeah. I'm a children's librarian, and the children here at Large Call Rustenburg, they, are, they actually adore um, the Speer and Hunt Willem books. I can just show them. <laughs> they love them, and you will see they also carry a special, like a golden dot. That means they are very popular. Oh, so, that's um, nice uh, to know. Also, on our is now hitting the spot, um, especially with our grade seven learners. They love that. Tell us, Anna and Willem, are they based on people and animals you know, or is it just fictional characters? They're fictional. I actually wrote Anna before I wrote Willem, um, but I sort of had difficulty to 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 get it published at that stage. Um, I wrote it in English and uh, I had to write Willem first before somebody would look at Anna. <laughs> and Anna was sort of based on um, my daughter who loves the sea and she's been a very strong swimmer and she's a master diver and you know she just loved um, the reefs and um, conservation then is you know if you spend time in nature you will love conservation it makes sense. 
Um, so yes, uh, it's not really built around her, but it was written for her, combining all the elements that she loves and that she's interested in. And then, of course, as I spent time in the sea with her uh, around the tropical islands, I became very interested myself in uh, marine life. I um, started to read I have quite a library on that now. And also pirates and um, poaching, you know, um, like Pam said, the, the gray areas, why people have to sometimes cross towards a way of sustenance that we frown on. Um, and you have to look behind the, the obvious and have more empathy for what's happening on the ground. Um, so all of that sort of got worked into my stories. And Willem, um, is Willem real? Um, what, what part does um, Willem play in your life? Yes, um, Willem was real. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Um, the first Willem books uh, was published, I think, more than 10 years ago. And then already he was a very mature dog. <laughs> so Willem was a family dog. And uh, as I said, the first Willem stories was, uh, I wrote in Germany on a train. And that was a way of combining adventure and scenery with something that my daughter knew, which was a dog. And he was quite a special dog. He had the grumpy personality and the hard-headedness and a lot of the characteristics that I wrote into the Willem character was the real dog, yes. We still miss him very much. He was the best dog ever. <laughs> um, I see that I get a message that my internet connection is unstable. I hope it's still clear and that you are still receiving me fine. Is it okay? Um, fine on my side. The adventures of your characters, are they based on real experiences or do you research your topics? I know that your daughter is traveling now. I think she's in Paris. And so are you incorporating that experiences or do you just do research to get, to get all those detail into your stories? Um, both. Um, usually it's very nice to write on site. Um, like the poacher story I wrote in the Kruger National Park you know, on the stoop of one of the little rondavals, you know, so to get the atmosphere, you need the detail, you need the grittiness. So yes, um, I like to, to write the story on site, um, usually on holiday or traveling, but then I do a lot of research as well. And that is the fun of, of writing because it forces you to, to explore more and deeper and ask more questions. Um, and that's when it gets really interesting. Um, so both of those things, yes. I must just um, make an observation. If I look at all the names on the screens, um, there's a lot of Kruger National Park lovers mm -hmm. <laughs> listening in now. I know Renal and I know Hank, he loves, and LCB. So it's nice. It seems that all the certain type of people always get together in some other way. And I think today at this webinar as well, with Pam also experiencing and Teresa have this love. So it was just an observation I want to make. What impressions me um, the most or some of them uh, is the illustrations in your book it enhances the whole experience who is the illustrator and of your books and why did you choose him well chris fainter is doing the dark detective series um and i didn't know him he's a, a very interesting young man and he was selected by michelle cooper who's my publisher my editor um, and she introduced us and um, Chris came to our house to meet Willem, uh, the original William, uh, the dog. Um, and he incorporated him into the stories. Um, and it's been many years now, we grew to be great friends. Um, and he also developed his style. You'll see in the, in the newer books, he's, he's, he's just so good. You know? And he has such a way of just capturing expression and um, mm -hmm making William look cute but dangerous at the same time. <laughs> no, he's That's brilliant. That's um, I've noticed in your book that there is an element of educating the reader in the content. Um, you educated the young readers while they have fun reading. Our theme today is nature conservation and one of the Detective William books, the one that I've shown, is about rhino poaching. 
is that an issue close to your heart? I know that you said, you know, while you became uh, more aware about the, uh, marine life, and so poaching was one of the things that also came across. Um, is that still an issue that you are, are you a champion for anti-poaching and how do you address that or how do you live that? Yes, of course. Um, I care very deeply about our interaction with our environment. Also as a microbiologist, you know, um, we work, I work with ecosystems in patients, my patients' bodies, you know, what, 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 where the balance get disrupted and uh, well, everything's actually just the same. An ecosystem is an ecosystem. Um, and we need to be more aware of what we're doing, yes. Um, and uh, as Pam said, you know, just not the, the obvious things. The poaching is bad and the guys who shoot the rhinos are cruel. There's much more to it. You know, you need to understand the whole environment and the social aspects of that as well. Um, and to get... With reading, you have the privilege of drawing a child into a whole world. In, um, and you can teach, I hope not too obviously, but get that empathy, you know, for the animals, for the people that live with the animals um, and get to, to them to experience um, a little bit deeper and just driving through the Kruger Park in a car and saying this is good or bad, you know. Um, I, with with a book, you can do so much more. Yes. yes. You're lucky. <laughs> you said when you travel, you scribble a lot, and um, I know you do research. But please tell the forum, what do you read to relax? Is it a sorry, a high school What What is your, what's your pleasure in reading? I am a voracious reader. I read everything. Um, I do, of course, read a lot of science as well. Or, you know, the hardcore science and general articles and the stuff that I need to do. And then I can go completely mushy and read grimmies and <laughs> romance. And um, I do read a lot. Um, most recently, I do I do binge. So um, I was going to go to the Amazon this year with the university on a research trip. Now that didn't happen. That's my greatest COVID sadness. But um, I was reading a lot about the Amazon and the conservation of the Amazon. And I was sort of worried that if I go there, I will cry all the time. That maybe next year I will go. Um, so I started reading a lot of, um, started with Journey to the River Sea of Eva Ibotson, which is a brilliant uh, youth novel um, and I started to read a lot of fiction around the Amazon and, um, and then I, I, I get onto the back of a specific author and I will read everything that that author wrote and <laughs> it's just so fun, such fun. So I read a lot and I read everything. Elizabeth, I am really in awe. I don't know how, how, uh, how do you put so many things into 24 hours? So I think when we think we are tired, I will always think of how, how is Elizabeth feeling? But please tell us, is there anything in the pipeline that we as librarians and um, readers can look forward to for this year or maybe next year? What are you planning? Well, I was planning some books on the Amazon which and the conservation of that, which is now a bit postponed. Um, there's an omnibus of the William, the William stories that's coming out with just it's going through the proofs of that. Um, and there's another uh, Spear und Willem that uh, is already written um, in Scotland this time, um, which is a fun one. Um, yes, and, and um, I, I usually um, write when I travel. So um, I have been busy um, completing manuscripts, but it depends where I go next, I think, what the new book will be. Hopefully the Amazon. <laughs> We're looking forward to that, and I hope that you um, that you will be blessed to visit the Amazon. And so much, uh, so thank you for being uh, with us today. And Pietro, I think if we can um, give over to you now, just to wrap up things for us a little bit. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed listening to everybody, and it's so great to see our authors again. And I want to thank Liasa very much for the opportunity that you've given NB Publishers and our lovely authors um, 
And yeah, I, I just also want to thank our authors for the lovely stories that you write. Pam, we're so happy that you decided to become a full-time writer now. And um, we enjoy your stories so much. And it enables us at least to travel in our minds if we can't do it physically. So thank you very much for that. And then I just want to tell you about the book. Someone asked where you can find the books. Um, all the books should be available at most good bookstores. You are welcome to Google NB Publishers at nb.co.za. On our website is a link to our catalogs. And then Ilana, unfortunately, she couldn't um, join us today because of uh, load shedding, but she will give you 30% discount on any of our books that you order from her if you mention that you attended this webinar. And her email address is on the invitation that you received. So I really hope that you will all be able to order it that order the books. I can I can recommend it. It's wonderful. I've read them all. So thank you very much. That's it from my side. Thank you very much, Pietra. Um, Pam and Elizabeth, it was wonderful to get to know the two of you. And thank you for taking us into your world. Um, I think as librarians, we only see sort of the, the end product. We don't always think about the process and how the books get to us. So thank you very much for that. MB Publishers, thank you for partnering with us today. I hope this is the first of um, many author sessions. Um, as, as I think Pam said, it is very hard now with the lockdown. There can't be any events having book launches. And uh, the librarians are more than willing to stand in and have a virtual launch if you're willing to. Thank you very much for partnering with us. Teresa and Renee, um, thank you very much. Uh, and as well as the, the rest of the May Committee, thank you for your efforts for putting this on for us today. We really appreciate that. And then lastly, and most importantly, for our delegates, thank you for giving up your time to share uh, with us this, this wonderful journey uh, with Pam and Elizabeth and the MB Publishers start, uh, team. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, just in closing, if you have any uh, authors, if you know any authors, if you have any books that you would like to feature, um, our participants get in touch with us. We can always see what we can do. And that is from me. We will put in the link. We will send an email with the link of this recording to everybody. And just a big thank you to everybody that participated today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.